terrorist group Hamas has slaughtered, as has been pointed out, over 1,300 people. And it's not hyperbole, it's just slaughtered. Slaughtered. And uh, including 31 Americans as part of that. And uh, they've taken scores of people hostage, including children. You said, imagine what those children hiding from Hamas were thinking. It's beyond my comprehension to be able to imagine what they're thinking. Beyond my comprehension. They're committed evils that, uh, and atrocities that uh, make ISIS look uh, somewhat more rational. You know, um, Americans are grieving with you. They really are. And Americans are worried. Americans are worried because we know there's a, this is not an easy field to navigate, what you have to do. But uh, the fact is that Israel, as they respond to these attacks, seems to me that uh, have to continue to ensure that you have what you need to defend yourselves. And uh, we're going to make sure that occurs, as you know. And we have to also bear in mind that Hamas does not represent all the Palestinian people. And uh, it has brought them only suffering. I was deeply saddened and outraged by the uh, explosion at the hospital in Gaza yesterday. And based on what I've seen, it appears as though it was done by the other team, not, not you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back. And if you are here, that means you're on Team Hoplite. The team that stands for truth and justice. And if you don't believe that, well, <laughs> you're simply a hateful bigot. But for the, today's episode, we are here to discuss, in particular, whose rocket was it anyway? Yeah. Um, I thought about doing a play on words like, uh, is that a rocket in your pocket? But I felt that was going to be in bad taste. So I went with that title. Yeah. Um, I, uh, I've been watching the news, I'm sure, just as you have. Uh, seeing uh, this carnage unfolding in the Middle East uh, between uh, Israel and Hamas and Palestine. And it's getting hot uh, quite quickly and uh, quite ugly. Uh, and last night um, was uh, the perfect example as to how all of this can spiral out of control very quickly. So um, I figured while this is still fresh in my mind and it's still... Uh, on television screens and on, I'm sure, um, smartphones and tablets. Uh, it's, it's the number one news story right now in the world, and I think for good reason. So let's try to dive into who could have possibly been responsible for this. And uh, will they ever be held to account? Okay, so last night, uh, the Al Ali Arab Hospital suffered an explosion. And the Gaza Health Authorities are saying that now they're estimating about a thousand dead and I'm sure uh, twice that number wounded. Um, this figure right now obviously is coming from a biased one-sided source, so we'll just take it with a grain of salt, but they're claiming 1,000 died from this explosion. Okay, and the uh, Al Ali Ar Arab Hospital uh, is actually a Christian Baptist hospital, and I looked this up. It was founded in Gaza City in 1882. And yeah, it's a Christian Baptist hospital that's been in operation there uh, for all this time. And they, you know, they treat anybody uh, regardless of, of their faith. And from what I understand, they are uh, a very reputable organization. So yeah, this happened last night and um, everybody is trading blame now. So let's, let's you know, dive into who's alleging what. Um, we see Hamas and now the Islamic Jihad, which prior to today, I did not know was involved in this conflict, but uh, Israel IDF is saying they are. Uh, they blame uh, Israeli airstrikes uh, or the airstrike for this uh, explosion. So what does Hamas or the Islamic Jihad have in their arsenal, their, their most capable munition? I looked this up, it's the Ayash 250. It's a, I guess, according to sources, a long range missile, but by today's, you know, first world conventional warfare standards, it's not really a long range missile. Missile. It's maybe, you know, small to medium range. 
compared to what the U.S. and Russia and China probably has. Like we're talking about intercontinental ballistic missiles that the U.S. has in its arsenal. And this thing has a, a range of 150 to 160 miles on a good day. Uh, its payload I couldn't really find, but from what I gather, based upon their other uh, missiles uh, in their arsenal, it's probably between 100 to 500 pounds max payload. And it's unguided, which means it's fired from its location, its propellant, its weight, and the wind, and all the other variables decide where it goes. And uh, it can only be really shot uh, towards a target using you know, rudimentary guesstimations as to where it could possibly land. So it's, it's, very, um, it's very crude by modern warfare standards. It's basically big artillery, like mortars. Okay, uh, the IDF, by the way, has shown footage and says that it has used the United States' missile defense system, which they've you know, conveniently nicknamed David Sling, to intercept the new AOSH-250. So according to the IDF, they have anti-missile defense capabilities that include uh, hitting AOSH-250s out of the sky. So the IDF is saying that they have the ability to uh, intercept these missiles. So even Hamas or Islamic Jihad's best missile munition, according to the IDF, can be shot down by what, what they have in their capabilities. Okay, now we go to Israel. They blame Hamas and the Islamic Jihad for what is being called a misfire. They're saying that the uh, Islamic Jihad or Hamas launched the missile, it went off course or broke apart, and um, it uh, struck this hospital, which conveniently was located in the middle of Gaza City, which has been subject to multiple bombing raids by uh, IDF uh, Air Force. Okay, so I'm going to stop right now, and I'm going to show a video of this errant or misfired missile that the IDF says they have images of showing it breaking up in midair and possibly crashing down on the uh, Al Ali Arab hospital. All right, back in a second. Okay, apologies for no sound. The, the, the clip on YouTube, I think, was from the Telegraph. It didn't come with any sound. But this is footage obviously taken from quite a distance away from Israeli territory, showing missiles being fired from Gaza into Israel and possibly David Sling or the Iron Dome or whatever pet name they've given their U.S. missile defense system intercepting them. And they're saying that one of those missiles was either partially intercepted or was fired uh, off course by Hamas and, uh, and or Islamic Jihad and just so happened to come down right on the uh, hospital. Okay, on the flip side, what is in the IDF's arsenal that could possibly have caused this explosion? Well, there's something called the JDAM, which stands for Joint Direct Attack Munition. And I know this is going on uh, all over Twitter right now, and everyone's spatting on uh, YouTube in the comment section saying, well, everyone's an armchair warrior right now. They're saying, oh, well, it was this. It was a misfired uh, rocket made in some Hamas terrorist's you know, garage, or it was you know, a JDAM dropped by uh, Israeli Air Force. Uh, well, what do we know about the JDAM? Uh, it is technically a guidance system that is retrofitted to unguided dummy bombs that turns them into smart bombs. So it was developed by the U.S. Uh, military in the early 90s, probably following the first Gulf War. And it's a guidance system 
that is uh, retrofitted to a dummy bomb, just a regular bomb that would drop and fall naturally uh, by gravity. And it includes uh, a guidance system uh, which arms the warhead on the nose and tail fins and flaps to um, uh, correct itself in mid-flight while it's being geolocated to its designated target from the uh, aircraft that was dropped from. Uh, so yeah, developed by the U.S. and it was used frequently during the Iraq and Afghanistan uh, wars, uh, enduring freedom. And I'm going to show a clip right now of uh, actual footage uh, of a JDAM being used uh, in Afghanistan uh, during the U.S. war there uh, a couple years ago. All right, back in a second. Okay, that one uh, definitely had sound, and it's a short clip, but it demonstrates the point perfectly of what a JDAM is capable of. Uh, you can hear that bomb cutting through the air, traveling at supersonic speeds, and uh, it has a payload of anywhere from 500 to 200 pounds, uh, and it's uh, dropped by a jet. So it has to be loaded on to a aircraft, most likely a jet, and uh, flown to its location or thereabouts within the vicinity and then dropped manually by the jet and then the guidance system that the JDAM stands for that's attached to the bomb will correct it mid-flight and literally put it within, I think it's between 15 or 20 feet of its intended designated area. So imagine dropping a, a bomb from you know 30,000 feet from a jet and you are able to hit a designated target within a range of 15 to 20 feet of accuracy, okay? Uh, we do know that the U.S. has sent JDAMs to the Ukraine, which they're currently using in the, the Ukraine war against Russia, although I don't know what jets are dropping these, but the JDAMs have been sent, among other things. And we do know for certain that Israel um, has received JDAMs in the past and in this current conflict. And we know that the U.S. sent a strike carrier group all right, with the, the USS Gerald Ford, and I believe they're sending the Eisenhower if they haven't sent them yet. So you have US aircraft carriers, right? Jets that can be retrofitted with JDAMs and flown by US jets or IDF jets that use the carrier as an operating base. I'm gonna break again and we're gonna show confirmed footage. I think this is from The Guardian, but The Wall Street Journal uh, confirmed this as well. Of, a, of the explosion at the hospital filmed from inside Gaza from a much closer location with sound. All right, back in a second again. Okay, now I took that clip and I rewound it three times so that you could hear that sound signature of whatever it was coming in that struck that hospital. Now people are saying, yeah, but it only left a, a one meter you know, wide crater and uh, well, the hospital's still standing. So 
you know, like all the, all the damage that really happened was blown out windows and burnt up cars and property damage. Um, well, if that's true, then um, why doesn't the IDF and Hamas and the Palestinian, uh, the, Gaza, the Gaza Health Ministry allow an independent investigation to take place, a ceasefire in the meantime, to find out whose rocket was it anyway? Was it a Hamas IH 250 or something else that misfired and broke apart? Or was it possibly an Israeli uh, dropped uh, JDAM or something else? Maybe it was a third option. Maybe the is Israeli uh, David Sling shot a missile to intercept the IH 250, missed, and it just so happened as it missed the IH 250, it came down on the hospital and struck it accidentally. I mean, we're not saying necessarily that Israel dropped this JDAM on purpose on this hospital, right? But again, I'm listening to the sound signature of that JDAM that was confirmed in Afghanistan to have been dropped on a target. And you can hear that same supersonic screech as it comes in before it hits its target, right? I'm hearing a similar sound signature from that cell phone footage of that, um, of that explosion uh, at the hospital in Gaza that was filmed from inside Gaza. Okay, something is coming in at an extreme rate of speed and slamming into that target. Okay, and right now the, the U.S. saying the other team did it, right? That's, that's how callous uh, the Biden administration is right now. They're calling uh, the Palestinians getting hit by either a rocket or a JDAM or what have you, the other team being responsible. But what I'm hearing and what I'm seeing is something that couldn't possibly be a, ho a homemade, homebrew Palestinian rocket that's made of, uh, you know, parts found in sewage and, and water piping and, and then, you know, retrofitted with blades and a cone and, you know, 100 or 125 pound payload. Uh, in that video, whatever was coming into the frame was moving really damn fast. And it hit and slammed into its target, whether it was intentional or unintentional, but it just so happened to be the hospital. And if these numbers are true, let's say it's a thousand, but let's say, let's say it's less. Let's, let's say the Gaza Health Ministry uh, inflated the numbers to get sympathy. Let's say it's back to half of that, 500 people dead. Uh, that's still a war crime, right? That is a war crime because this is a civilian target without question, treating people who are also the victims of previous bombings that we do know were launched by the IDF. So the IDF does not dispute that they are bombing locations inside Gaza and that there are civilian casualties, right? This hospital just happens to be the biggest casualty of the last 24 hours. This is a war crime. So why wouldn't you allow people to come in and investigate if you have the truth on your side and if the other guys were responsible. Well, let's read an article really quick as to why um, there might not be an investigation anytime soon and how that might give you uh, reason to believe it's this team versus the other team. Okay, this broke uh, two hours ago on uh, October 18th, and I'll read from Reuters. Headline, U.S. vetoes U.N. Security Council action on Israel-Gaza. United Nations. United States vetoed a United Nations Security Council resolution on Wednesday that would have called for humanitarian pauses in the conflict between Israel and Palestinian Hamas militants to allow humanitarian aid access to the Gaza Strip. The vote on the Brazilian drafted text was twice delayed in the last couple of days as the United States tries to broker aid access to Gaza. Twelve members voted in favor of the draft text on Wednesday while Russia and Britain abstained. We're on the ground doing the hard work of diplomacy, U.S. Ambassador to the U.N. Linda Thomas-Greenfield told the 15-member council after the vote. We believe we need to let that diplomacy play out. Yes, resolutions are important, and yes, this council must speak out, but the actions we take must be informed by the facts on the ground and support direct diplomacy efforts that can save lives. The council needs to get this right, she said. Okay, I'll pause right there. I don't know what the hell she's talking about. That paragraph sounds like a bunch of sophistry, uh, fluff, smokescreen, bullcrap. Um, 
yeah, we have to get it right. And yeah, these are important. And yeah, we have to be informed by the facts on the ground, which is why the UN is voting for this resolution for a ceasefire so that independent investigators from different United Nations that are not party to this conflict can come in, render aid, and possibly get down to brass tacks as to who actually caused this. And we can get past the speculation. But Miss uh, Linda Thomas-Greenfield, she says, uh, well, this can save lives if we veto this. I'll continue reading. Washington traditionally shields its ally Israel from any Security Council action. We have just been witness once again of hypocrisy and the double standards of our American colleagues, said Russia's UN Ambassador Vasily Nevenzia. A Russian drafted resolution that called for a humanitarian ceasefire failed to pass on Monday. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres on Wednesday called for an immediate humanitarian ceasefire to allow for the release of hostages and humanitarian aid access to Gaza. Russia said it now asked for 193 member UN General Assembly to be convened for an emergency special session in the conflict. It could decide to put a draft resolution to a vote there where no countries hold a veto power. General Assembly re resolutions are non-binding but carry political weight. UN Middle East Peace Envoy Tor Wenesland told the council that there is, quote, very real and extremely dangerous risk of an expansion of the conflict. I fear that we are at the brink of a deep and dangerous abyss that could change the trajectory of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, if not of the Middle East as a whole, said Wenesland, addressing the council via video from Doha. China's UN ambassador, Zhang Jun, accused the United States of leading council members to believe the resolution could be adopted after it did not express opposition during negotiations. He described the vote as nothing short of unbelievable. Thomas Greenfield said the United States was disappointed the draft resolution made no mention of Israel's rights of self-defense and she blamed Hamas for the Gaza humanitarian crisis. We're working with Israel, its neighbors, the UN, and other partners to address the humanitarian crisis in Gaza. It's critical that food, medicine, water, and fuel begin flowing into Gaza as soon as possible. She said, Hamas's own actions have brought this on, this severe humanitarian crisis. Okay, so once again, we have uh, Linda Thomas-Greenfield saying, well, Hamas caused this problem, so it's, it's pretty much on them, and Israel has a right to self-defense. I don't know anyone on the UN uh, Security Council or even on the 193 members that have said Israel doesn't have the right to self-defense. I mean, there may be one or two, but the vast, vast majority of people in the UN, whether Security Council or not, are going to say that every nation has a right to self-defense. And that putting this continually on, Gaza's, uh, on Hamas's shoulders is costing the people who actually live in Gaza. The UN Security Council now has put the, Americans, the United States into a trick bag. Uh, they vetoed uh, this resolution to allow a ceasefire in Gaza and for humanitarian aid to come in. But several months ago, they uh, complained that Russia had vetoed a similar resolution that they put forward to allow a ceasefire and for aid to go into Ukraine. Okay, so now it's the, the shoe is now on the other foot, right? The United States is vetoing a uh, UN Security Council resolution to intervene in Gaza, uh, Israel's uh, bombing of Gaza, just as Russia vetoed a resolution to allow humanitarian aid to come in on behalf of Ukraine. Okay, this is, this is the United States constantly, uh, you know, tripping over itself and putting its foot in its mouth. Um, this is why this conflict, I don't see any easy way out because this this escalation, whether who, whoever's responsible for this, um, something is going to take its place, right? But this is a war crime and it should 100% be investigated if, like I said, half of these numbers are true. Um, but the United States doesn't want that to happen. Israel doesn't want that to happen. So my question is, if the truth is Hamas and the Islamic Jihad, one or the other, caused this, why wouldn't you want UN inspectors to come in and verify what you've just said, okay? You've got US aircraft carriers parked off of the coast. We know they have jets that can carry these JDAMs. People are throwing the word JDAM around. I just explained what one is to you. You saw the two clips. You heard the, the sound signature of whatever it was coming in. I'm not saying an AS-250 can't make a similar sound signature, 
but I haven't heard one yet. And this rocket that's, again, Palestinian-made uh, was first launched, I want to say, in 2021. So it's more or less brand new. JDAMs, JDAMs have been in use for at least 30 years now. Um, yeah, and the UN Security Council was just vetoed by the U.S. for a conflict that could easily go thermonuclear if countries like Iran, Saudi Arabia, Lebanon with Hezbollah, Turkey, Egypt, if they get involved in this fight, it could easily go thermonuclear in a matter of days. And I say that with no hyperbole, right? So I do think the UN should convene for a special session. I do think the US should get voted down, that no veto should prevail on this, and they should pass a ceasefire resolution draft to get this investigated first and foremost, but also so that people living in Gaza can finally get food, water, uh, medical supplies, and just literally have a day or two of peace without hearing a bomb dropping over their head. Uh, also, without having to fear that um, they're going to be used as pawns in this game by people uh, who claim that they're representing their interests, like, like Hamas. Um, but again, it won't be binding. So again, the United States and Israel could thumb their nose at the UN, the entire UN, and carry this on for as long as they like. Because again, it will take the collective efforts of all the Muslim nations around Israel and Palestine to intervene for something to be done, uh, other than a sternly worded letter from the UN. Okay, folks. Uh, yeah, I'm going to keep covering this because I, I don't see this conflict uh, simmering down anytime soon. And this hospital explosion last night was beyond the pale. Like, so whoever was responsible should be held accountable for it. And everybody, except for those who did it, will want to investigate it and find out exactly what happened. Um, it's, it's pretty sickening. But anyway, um, if you agree or disagree uh, with uh, my take on this, please feel free to uh, say so uh, in the comments. That's what they're for. But uh, yeah, I, uh, I'm going to keep on this topic and uh, we will we'll be back next time. Uh, Till then, uh, give us a thumbs up and a subscription and uh, take care of yourself.